another article highlighting how the means are failing and flailing. This is out of the Business Insider. The number of young working men without college degrees has tanked in the last 30 years. It could be because their wages have barely budged. It could also align with the fact that women are going to school, going to colleges and universities more because um, women have been allowed to go. And so in the generations that women have been allowed to go, they are outdoing men because oppression is what helped men get ahead. And now that they actually have to compete, they are tanking. Okay, but let's look at what the article said. A Pew Research Center report found that young men without college degrees earned more in 2023 than a decade earlier. In the longer term, though, real wages for those without degrees have been mostly flat since the 90s. It could be contributing to a smaller share of men without degrees in the labor force. Young men without college degrees have been dropping out of the workforce for decades, but those who are working have higher earnings compared to 10 years ago even as those wages have been mostly going sideways for decades. On Thursday, the Pew Research Center released a report delving into whether a college degree is worth it. The report compares economic outcomes for young adults who've completed a college degree with those who have not. In a survey of 5,200 adults in the U.S. conducted from November to December of 2023, the report found that only 22% of adults think the cost of college is worth it if it's accompanied by taking on student loans. While those who graduated from a four-year degree program reported their higher education as being extremely or very useful in equipping them with the skills they needed for their careers. Young men aged 25 to 34 without college degrees saw improvement in their economic condition over the past decade even though in the longer term, their wages have not kept up. For example, according to the report, median earnings have been increasing modestly over the past 10 years for young men with a high school education or some college education who are working full-time and the median household income adjusted for inflation of young men with, high, with a high school education is now 75,200 up from 63,800 in 2014. In, re in the recently tight labor market where some employers have had a rough time getting workers interested in filling open roles and amid low unemployment rates, Richard Fry, senior researcher at the Pew Research Center, told Business Insider in a statement, employers have to pay higher wages in order to attract and retain workers, included, including less educated workers. Well, yeah, in this economy, yes, you, you absolutely have to pay higher wages. Labor markets were also tight in the late 90s, accompanying that wages were also bid up for non-college educated young men at the time. While young men working full-time year-round and those um, and whose highest educational attainment is a high school diploma have higher real earnings than in 2014, they are not earning as much as their peers with a bachelor's degree or more. Pew found that young men with at least a bachelor's saw their median earnings rise from 67500 in 2014 to 77000 in 2023, a 14% increase over the decade, while those whose highest educational attainment is a high school diploma saw median um, earnings climb from $39,000 in 2014 to $45,000 in 2023, a similar increase of 14% based on the data shared with Business Insider. This report comes amid a changing higher education atmosphere. A growing number of young adults are choosing to skip college because they don't believe taking on student debt will pay off. And some states are increasingly removing college degree requirements in an effort to fill more jobs. As a result, earning a degree might not come with the same benefits and prestige that it used to. The unemployment rate for Americans aged 25 and older with only a high school diploma was 4% as of April 2024, down from 6.2% in April 2014. But despite the gains in earnings and household income for young men without degrees over the past decade, economic conditions are still far from perfect. Over the past few decades, the challenge of finding a high paying job without a college degree is among the reasons some men have exited the labor force. 
and we've actually talked about this, where there are 7 million men that are primed age, that is 25 to 54, are out of the workforce. Um, in April 1950, about 96% of American men ages 25 to 54 had a job or were actively looking for work, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. As of April 2024, that figure had fallen to around 89%. As of April, 62.9% of U.S. men aged 25 and older with only a high school degree were employed. That is terrible. Down from over 72% in 2000, although an aging population could explain some of this decline. Pew Research Center's analysis shows a share of young men with a high school diploma as their highest educational attainment who are working or looking for work has dropped from 98% in 1970 to around 87% in 2023. That rate had climbed from 84% in 2021. Fry said in a statement that one reason for the long-term drop in the share of this particular group of men seeking work or actually working could be due to falling wages, but there is a debate as to whether that alone is sufficient to explain the decline. The rising rates of young men with criminal records could be a reason given they could have a hard time finding work. More recently, the rise of opioid addiction may be contributing to the decline in young men's labor force participation. These challenges persist today for some men who now account for less than half of college enrollees, even as more companies have started hiring candidates without a degree and wages have risen over the past few years for some lower income workers. While the median inflation adjusted earnings of US, I'm sorry, young US men without a college degree have risen over the past decade, they remain lower than they were in 1970, per Pew's analysis. In contrast, a chart in the report said labor force participation of young women without a college degree has risen since 2014. The report says as of 2023, 69% of young women with a high school education were in the labor force, as were 78% of young women with some college education. Still, the levels are slightly lower than 2000, which could be a result of a lack of federal paid and family leave benefits, forcing some women to leave their jobs if they have a baby. Now, understand that all of this goes along with the birth rate conversation, because if there are no family leave benefits, no maternity leave, no child care, and child care is still extremely um, high, women are not going to have these babies because they have to fall out of the workforce. Deciding whether the cost of college is worth it is something younger Americans are re increasingly grappling with. A recent survey from Deloitte found that a third of Gen Z and millennials chose to skip higher education due to financial barriers, personal circumstances, and looking for careers that don't require college educations, showing how if schools don't adjust to the changing values of young adults, they might soon lose their relevance. Okay, and we do know that women going into college is about 60, I mean, it's a 60-40 split with women outdoing men going into um, college. But these days, people do recognize that there are other options and are not just pushing their children to go straight into college. One thing I do want to remind us all, because the majority of my network is women, if these men have fallen out of the workforce and they are not doing anything else productive, you don't even see them looking for a job. You don't see them looking for hustle ways to make money, legal hustle ways to make money, gig ways to make money, entrepreneurial spirit, whatever. Let them hold their own nuts. Let them figure it out. Do not, do not take on parasitic males that have just fallen out and need your time, energy, and resources because they have none because they are going to look to be a pest that wants to nest and rest because they have no other options outside of couch surfing. All right, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So this article just goes to show where we are continuing to shift as an economy and as a country. Unmarried millennials are twice as likely as boomers to buy homes solo and 10 times as likely to buy with a friend. We have got to understand that the economy is a factor, that women getting married later in life is a factor, that women deciding that they do not want um, to be married or have children is also a factor because some people just might not need a home or just can't afford a home or don't want to marry 
um, heterosexually in order to have one. So let's talk about this article from Fortune. Millennials may be known as the generation of renters, but they've made significant home buying inroads over the past few years with more than half becoming owners. They're just doing it differently. Gen Y is far more likely to buy a home on their own or with a friend than a share with, I'm, I'm sorry, than share one with a spouse compared with older generations, according to a new report from personal finance site Bankrate. In fact, in a new survey of over 1,200 homeowners, the company found that more than 40% of millennials bought on their own compared with 34% of Gen Xers and 22% of baby boomers. And 10% of millennials did so with a friend or a non-romantic partner. Meanwhile, just 1% of baby boomers and 3% of Gen Xers reported buying with a friend. Older generations were far more likely to buy with a spouse or domestic partner. 70% of boomers did so, as did 56% of Gen Xers. For millennials, that figure was just 47%. Okay, here's the graph. The dark blue, the first in the column of each of these columns, are buying with a spouse. And obviously that is the biggest for each of these um, of each of these generations. But you can see that buying with a spouse is going down from baby boomers to Gen X to millennials. But what is going up this way? Buying solo. So baby boomers have the smallest, then Gen X, then millennials. Um, so that's buying solo and then buying with a friend is also very, very small with baby boomers, a little bit bigger with Gen X, and it's become increasingly more favorable to do it as a millennial. So this graph really tells the story of where we are in this economy and in this culture. The survey lines up with other data about millennials who, broadly speaking, carry more non-housing debt than previous generations, are getting married later in life, and are becoming homeowners later as well. The new path they are carving is reshaping not only the housing market, but American life in general. Women, especially younger college educated women, have also made substantial gains in the job market and have increased their buying power over the last few decades, says bank rate analyst Alex Gailey. While getting married later in life accounts for the increase in single millennials buying homes, affordability and lack of supply are responsible for the rise in co buying with non-romantic partners, especially for first-time buyers. Housing costs have forced many young buyers to consider creative solutions, like buying with a friend or family member, says Gailey. Millennials are the most likely generation to say they purchased a multi-generational home, according to the National Association of Realtors. There's also been a recent rise in the share of unmarried couples buying homes. They made up 18% of first-time home buyers in, in 2022 compared with 4% in 1985, according to a different NRA report. Once again, affordability is one of the main drivers. Two incomes are better than one, and buying before marriage can help millennials escape the ever-spiraling rent prices and accomplish other financial goals, maybe even save up for the wedding. The primary drive of co-ownership is cost saving. Um, Jennifer Patchen, an open door real estate broker, previously told Fortune, co-buying allows millennials to buy now, securing an affordable place to live in the present while setting up a solid investment for the future. Assuming affordability and other factors don't start to improve, Gen Z, which boasts members as old as 27, may extend millennials' home buying habits. If we continue to see a, rise, a rising share of single Americans or Americans marrying later in life in the next few years, I suspect we'll continue to see these trends with young future buyers. And remember, there is also so much other things going on in society. Uh, with women going to college more, that means that there will be a change in what is going on in the workforce. That means that women um, will continue to opt out or get married later in life and may continue with this child-free movement. The 4B movement may continue. These encelosauruses may continue to fail and flail. And so you know, women buying homes with their female friends might continue. And I do just want to remember, I mean, remind us all that there have been several articles written about single women owning homes. 
And what I love about what is going on in this discourse, the economy may be sucky for lots of people. Women are adjusting. Women are still handling things despite what is going on. And I love that for us. I love that for us. Just keep pressing, keep being agile and keep doing what you need to do. If it is creating community, pooling resources, um, fostering those relationships with other people, even if you can't do the things that you want to do right now, keep those um, resources and those people in the community going. All right. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment and share.